I'm here because I had some people asking how can art therapy help getting over narcissistic abuse. Narcissistic abuse is not something that everybody knows. They think that it's just a self-absorbed person. It's much more than that. It will take your power, it will take your life little by little, uh, destroy your soul, make you want to die. If it's a partner or a family member, is it's devastating. So in this artwork, I just wanted to show you how I studied, like trying to understand the mind of a narcissist so I can be aware of it, but this is just the first part. Ignoring you have not decided to change a painful way to destroy you and you don't see it happening. And when you see something, you will be called insecure, crazy, sensitive. It's a different persona in public and um, than behind closed doors. It's absolutely a different personality. And um, so everybody else will think, well, this person is crazy because how this amazing, sweet, kind, loving person can be the one that um, this person is describing to me, right? They never admit their their wrongdoings, like silent treatment, uh, circular arguments, um, triangulation. So they do a lot of these things and you need to understand what it causes on, like inside you. So they destroy um, the hippocampus. It's crazy, but um, this kind of of abuse will actually change your 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 brain. So you will have short term memory because the, in the hippocampus, um, the damage is started to destroy the brain cells and shrinks it inside. Per frontal cortex, that is what controls attention, memory, decision making, and planning. Uh, you're gonna make you're gonna feel that you cannot make decisions by yourself. The amygdala is the fear center of the brain and it's activated when you are anxious and afraid and be anxious all the time, like the walking on edge your identity and you're hooked in the abuse like it's a drug. In the body, you have chemical peptides addiction and that makes you crave this abuse like it is a drug. It creates cognitive dissonance. It's an inner struggle that you have between reality and non-reality. The reality that he says or she says to you, you start thinking that your memories, your perceptions are wrong. And that's called gaslighting. You sometimes uh, think that, oh my gosh, but I'm the abusive one because I'm reacting. That is reactive abuse. It is crazy making. It's not that you are really a bad person because that's how they make you feel. It is that you're reacting and that's reactive abuse. You have the volume of gray matter in their brain, okay? So they, they say that in the left anterior insular re region of the brain is the place where we have compassion, empathy, and the one that regulates, regulates emotions. And uh, some studies prove that narcissists don't have this um, enough volume on that area of the gray matter. So that will make you understand. This is kind of a biological explanation how this have destroyed um, my hippocampus, my prefrontal cortex, my amygdala, and how um, it's. It, it's an addiction. Then we have PTSD. So you are going to feel that you're broken, you're pessimistic, you are suspicious, you are untrusting, you are scattered, distracted, you don't have concentration, no memory, you're demotivated, you cannot feel that you have energy no matter how much you sleep and um, you start trying to numb. And that's why there's so many people that have been um, in an abusive relationship like this and then they commit suicide or they uh, end up being um, alcoholic or a drug addict because they try to numb these, this terrible trauma that, that a narcissist created in your brain. And the effects are confusion, brain fog, self-doubt, fear, terror, feeling um, that you're losing your mind. You cannot make good judgments because there's always a person that he was telling you that your judgments were wrong, um, that make you feel that you were crazy. The harder thing for me was the silent treatment. The silent treatment, and um, it's also called stonewalling, and it's refuse to speak and pretend that they didn't hear. Um, sometimes they use sex to punish you, or if you are a person that your love language, for example, is, and they will take away what you need in your relationship to work and for yourself to be secure, and they will take it away. Flying monkeys. So they will spin a web of false reality among a group of people that are their flying monkeys, and they will say how horrible you were and how awful and how you were the abuser. And um, people, because usually the narcissists are so charismatic and so kind and so nice in front of people, they will believe them. So it's, it's a really tough situation to be in because then there's people that were your friends and were your family and then suddenly they cannot understand why you are doing that to them.
Art therapy will help you actually to relieve all of this. This is just the first part of the exercise is for you to understand what are you dealing with and where are you. And um, after this explanation, I would like to present um, what it has been really helpful for me. And there's a lot of words of affirmation and a lot of paintings that actually make you the light, the light within, the light of forgiveness, the light of compassion, the light that understands um, that all that we all the people that we encounter in this life, in this world, is just for us to learn a lesson. To a video really soon about how to heal with art therapy from narcissistic abuse. These words of affirmation, they are phrases especially created for uh, people that have suffered narcissist abuse. So because we have so many things that are telling us that we are not worthy and you know this person has devalued us so much and hurt our inner strength so much that you need to understand that you are the light that you're the source and you need to start loving yourself and give permission to do what is best for you and understand that you cannot nothing nobody no situation can take away the power you have within you and you need to trust and val validate yourself you need to trust your own reality because after being in a narcissistic relationship you won't be able to trust yourself and your reality but yes you are the only one that can validate your own reality because you are living it and nobody no one should tell you that you are not living what you're living that you're not feeling what you're feeling and that whatever it is that you feel is what you feel and it's, it's what it is and it's right so if somebody starts telling you that you're not feeling what you're feeling that is gaslighting and that is a type of abuse even if it's not a narcissist abuse it's a toxic abuse and tell yourself that you never give up that you will keep going no matter what and make self-care your priority because you are important and your children and everybody else around will heal when you are healed 